Well, a very warm welcome back to live coverage of the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships here at the English Institute for Sport in Sheffield. It is the home of British Para Table Tennis. And our next match comes from the men's doubles, class 18. It's a round of 16 match between Poland and Great Britain. So for Poland, we have Igor Mistal and Maxim Trudicki. We saw them in action in our first game of the day. And for Great Britain, we have Will Bailey and Ashley Facey. So it's another really intriguing match, of course. It is a knockout match. One of these two will advance through to the quarter-finals. My name is Bradley Hope, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Farrell Anthony for this one. Farrell, how do you see this one going? Um, well, it'll be an intriguing matchup because um, Bailey and Facey have not played before together in an international. Um, but they've, they've got a good combination. They're left and right-handed. Um, but the, the polls impressed this morning, so... Um, it should be a tricky matchup. Well, Will Bailey coming into this uh, men's doubles off the back of a gold in the Class 7 singles. He's had a uh, brilliant week so far here in Sheffield and will be aiming to try and add another medal to his collection. Here is Ashley Facey with that little tip over the net. Oh, and Facey down the centre. That's a brilliant shot brilliant from Ashley shot. Facey. And that's um, just, he's got some explosive power as a uh, facey and that, he showed it there. And they advance into a 3-1 lead and that's four and they are moving around the table elegantly and Bailey has secured another point for GB. Facey now, Bailey. Brilliant combination play and uh, uh, raced into a 5-1 lead and Bailey and Facey are just uh, combining well at the moment. They are, they are. And they're communicating well. I don't know if you noticed but um, Facey indicated one serve and Bailey said no I want this serve. Um, that's what he was saying basically when he was communicating just then. So this Polish uh, duo, Igor Mistal and uh, Maxim Trudicki saw them in action uh, earlier on in the day against the uh, German pair of uh, Jan Reining and Benedikt Müller. Brilliant return from Bailey there. Really fast and long into the Mitzel forehand. Brilliant again from Will Bailey. Both Bailey and Facey Thompson, ba Facey, sorry, have got um, brilliant serves and uh, they utilise them well to complement each other. Well, GB lead by seven points to three in the first game and Poland uh, hit back. Brilliant thing there from Facey. Wide to the 264 and... and, and it was brilliant. They're playing well, the British pair. Here is Igor Mistal now for uh, Poland. Facey, oh, brilliant response. And he's looking, the thing is, he's so quick, Facey. He's looking to get in and he'll get in strong and that, that was proof of the pudding just then. Flown out of the trap so far in the first game. And they are two points away from claiming the first game in no time. Ashley Facey, you've seen him in action here on day five. Oh, just gets that one wrong on occasion. Ashley Facey, of course, partnering up with Grace Williams in the mixed doubles plus 17. They lost out to the Spanish uh, duo uh, Perez and Martinez so uh, Ashley Facey will be desperate to try and uh, claim a victory in the men's doubles oh. 
Radinski now, Poland. Bailey comes across. Oh, and that one is long. And GB one away from claiming the first game. Well, and just like that, Great Britain have claimed the first game, wasting no time at all. GB lead by one game to nil, and it's a great start for Bailey and Facey in the first game. Yeah, they'll be happy with the start. Both of them are playing well, both of them are serving well, and um, they're, they're going to be putting pressure on the poles all the time. Um, they're both, even though Will is uh, a class seven, he, do, he does possess quite a lot of power, and the dynamic is different. Um, than playing with the grace one because Will is actually right handed so it allows um, it gives uh, Facey a lot more freedom with his forehand than having two left handers so he can get that forehand in really well um, conversely the Poles you know they started slowly but they won't be complacent in the Great Britain pair and because they know that these things can change on a sixpence so um, they'll want to keep the pressure on whilst the Poles will want to sort of try and impart their um, game on the Brits as well. well. So far, so good then for GB. Just a reminder that uh, tickets are still available and you can come and join us tomorrow. We've got a full day of action as we round up the European Para Table Tennis Championships. We'll crown our... Uh, Gold, silver and bronze medalists tomorrow in the doubles. Tickets are priced at £12. Get yourself down to the England English Institute for Sport here in Sheffield. Come and spend your Saturday with us. As uh, Poland just going to a 2-0 lead. So a bit of work to do for GB. And an important point there. Claimed by GB. It's 2-1. Facing out. Just drifted that serve. You can see what he was trying to do, but it, the execution was wrong. And the Poles will be pleased with this lead now. Yeah, and uh, pushed that one wide of the table. And Poland now lead by five points to one. Bailey to serve. Well, uh, Facey's almost <laughs> reacting to it, almost in a bit of disbelief that he's missing those. That's uh, three in a row for Ashley Facey, wide of the table. Yeah, what he's trying to do is he's trying to play down the line to keep it really tight down the line. Um, but he's just missing. For a game of five margins, but there, Mitzel, nice backhand there from him. Judicki and Mital are motoring through the moment, so the point gained back for GB. Oh, good work for um, Ashley Facey, dispatching that one, making no mistake. And they're just starting to claw back the scoreline, 8-3. Well, that uh, was uh, absolutely marvellous from Igor Mistal. Stunning shot. That was a great shot from Mistal. Wide, and he, he managed to to go it, it sort of went round the net it didn't go over the net it sort of went round the net which counts Poland two points away from claiming the second game Mistal now with the serve touch from Bailey that one is wide from uh, Ashley Facey just not gone his way so far in this second game. It's not come off for him. And that one is wrapped up in no time for Poland. 
and in a blink of an eye it is 1-1 one, one. yeah this is the, this is the thing about doubles it can change when the the pairings change over to face different receivers or different servers and that's the case in the in this particular game um the brits took the first game quite comfortably the poles have taken this game quite comfortably um so they'll obviously now they need to start again the great british pairing and uh, their coach matt kenny is just explaining a few things there um giving instruction to one player what he wants them to do and giving instruction to the other player um and the i'm assuming the poles will be doing exactly the same thing well two comfortable wins for both of these teams in the two games so far which way will this game turn next so in the first day we saw facey um really going for the attack and he's done the same thing well, it's a good start in game three for GB great backhand from Facey there and that was Will Bailey came round the ball and underneath to create backspin that time um, creating the error from Mitzel. Basically just delicately plays it over the top of the court, but it's a good return. Just to reduce the deficit to one early on in game three. That, yeah, that was a, a great return from Mitzel then. Wow, brilliant, brilliant rally. Brilliant rally. A, a few fortunate edges, but there was some great stuff then played by both pairings, and the poles came out on front. 2-2 Two -two then in game number three. It's a sensational rally. You can claim back in front. Miss Dow goes for it, and that one goes long from Ashley Facey tipping off the net, and it's 3-2 favour of Poland. Here is Ashley Facey again who will serve up. That one also long this time from Bailey. So Poland. Yeah, the, the ball was pushed fast and into Will Bailey's body. He couldn't get out away enough to get a, a, the good shot in and that hence he missed the ball. But the Poles have come back strongly in this game. Oh, no mistake from Igor Mistal. Saw the space and executed it well. And uh, they've now gone into a 5-2 lead. Ditsky now with the serve. Mistal again replies and forces Ashley Facey back. And they now lead by six points to two. Good third game so far for Poland. Oh, and they got lucky there. He's put his hand up as well, just to acknowledge the fact that he was lucky. But the poles of they've started off well, you know, they started the third game as they finished the second really strongly. And picked up from where they left off. Good work from Janitsky. Igor Mistal now with the reply, and that's a point back for GB. Still plenty of work to do in game number three. Really putting the pressure on uh, Ashley Facey, uh, the uh, the two Polish players. They are, and they'll be f full of confidence. And Bailey just showing his frustration there about missing that ball. Well, that's one back for GB. Great serve there from Ashley Facey. But now they, t they need to keep the pressure on. Yeah. 
Oh, brilliant work from Igor Mistal. No mistake from him, and Poland now lead by two games to one. So ever since that first game, they uh, fell behind. They have been the team in control and have been dominant in the previous two games. They have, and uh, the great British pairing will have to sort that out if they want to get back into this game. It, it, and it quite easily can happen. They just need to get a great start in this fourth game. Um, it's very difficult because Mitzel has got as much power as Ashley Facey and they're both in in the first game that they played this morning Mitzel wasn't that good but to this afternoon he's hardly missed any of those big shots he's been playing down the line and down the diagonal and he's causing a few problems well, as you see the score on your screen we've had some close games already this morning and early afternoon but the, the three games have been anything but re close really 11-5, 11-3 11-5 so can Poland finish the job off, can GB work the way back into this game and take it to five games Will Bailey just asking the crowd to give them some more noise give them some more energy of course on day five of these championships It's Poland who've got off to the uh, perfect start. One missed out. It's a serve. Brilliant from Bailey there. Moved round from his forehand to play with his backhand. Oh, good work from uh, Igor Mistal. As you were mentioning, uh, Farrell, he's just not missing out on those opportunities. He's really taking them. Yeah, and he's doing it with power as well and precision. Uh, Will Bailey's OK, though. He just fell as he tried to play that ball. That was a let serve. now with that uh, initial serve decent rally and it's a fourth point yeah and he's um, the coach has called the timeout yeah no surprises really with the, uh, the timeout and the position they find themselves in it's just not clicked for them after the uh, opening game yeah the first game they played really well in the first game but the polls sorted it out and it's them who've got the ascendancy at the moment and um the coach is there, Matt Kenny, just giving them some guidance and advice um, on how to get back into this game. This can sometimes be a three-way conversation as well, um, because obviously the players are out there, they know what's going off. So, um, although the coach, Matt Kenny, will be giving them some guidance, they'll be listening intently and having some input as well. Well, Will Bailey, plenty of experience, of course, in his career. Four major titles in the singles, Class 7. Can he apply his experience here in the men's doubles? GB back into this one along his, with his teammate. So Facey, Facey now here again. That one goes wide and he's just almost questioning it. Why has the ball not hit the table? Yeah, I mean, the opportunity's there and he's got to go for it. He can't just play safe on the table because... These two players are playing really well. For the po the poles are playing really well. So facing out, he got missed out. Fires back with real intent. Almost ruthless from he got missed out. No mistake. And he's missed out now to serve. Well, Poland and uh, this uh, men's duo, ever since that first game, have dominated proceedings. And they are flying towards victory now. They are really on a roll. Can uh, Will Bailey just sum up 
One final bit of brilliance. Doesn't seem likely. And that's one back for the Brits. They've got a long way, but they just take it point by point. But there it is. Mitzel with the backhand winner. Yeah, no mistake from Igor Mitzel and Poland are through to the quarterfinals of the men's doubles class 18 in a dominant performance, you have to say, really, other than the first game. GB won the first game 11-5 and then from there it was 11-3, 11-5, 11-3 to Poland. So after a slow start, they really motored to Poland and they are now through to the quarterfinals of the men's doubles. Yeah, it's a shame really and Ash, Ashley and Will will be disappointed for Great Britain. They, 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 they know they could have played better but today, um, after that first game, the Poles were, they just, they just were very solid in everything they did and they didn't miss didn't make any unforced errors and um, you know they deserve to win the game in the end so a good victory then for Poland in the men's doubles class 18 and they will go through to the quarterfinals which will be later on today so our next match will come from the men's doubles Class 18 as well, round of 16, it will be GB taking on Germany. That will be in around about 20 minutes or so. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back for our next match very soon.
Well, welcome back to live coverage of the ITTF 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships here at the English Institute for Sport, the home of British Para Table Tennis in Sheffield, England. So we are on to our next match. It's the men's doubles class 18 round of 16 match. It's an old rivalry between GB and Germany. Plenty of sporting battles throughout the years across multiple sports. And this is the next crunch match between GB and Great Britain. For GB, we have Ross Wilson and Joshua Stacey. As for Germany, we have Maya Wagner and Henrik Meyer. So my name is Bradley Hope, and I'm delighted to say joining me for this one is Farrell Anthony. Farrell. It's another uh, GB match uh, in the men's doubles class 18. Can Wilson and Stacey go one better this time? I think they're quite capable. I mean, they're quite, um, in terms of rankings and everything, um, Ross Wilson is ranked number two in class nine. Uh, I think Joshua Stacey is ranked five or six. Um, they, I think this is a new pairing as well. So, I mean, they've played... I mean, I say new pair, and they have to play a few matches together, but never in a major. So um, they'll be hoping to progress to the next round. But like we've seen before, um, the German the German table tennis players are very good anyway. So it should be a good matchup. Um, it's a left and right handed combination for Ross and um, Josh. So we'll just have to see how it pans out first. Here is Stacey with the first serve and the first point for Great Britain. Good start yes. for GB. Both these players are very powerful with their forehands and backhands. Stacey with the uh, second serve. One apiece for the opening two serves. Ross Wilson is a gold medal winner in the World Championships in the singles class eight back in 2018. Joshua Stacey aiming to try and claim his first major gold. Silvers and bronze, but aiming to go one better. Can he do so in the men's doubles? Both of these players. Both of these players lost in the quarter-final stage of their respective singles, class nine. Brilliant winner from Josh Stacey there down the line. Serve. Good work from Stacey. Yeah, very quick then, Josh Stacey to get the ball. And as our viewers have probably noticed in the doubles, that there's a lot of signalling and communication using the hand signals uh, below the table to indicate what kind of spin they want on the ball. Good serve there from the German pair. And there's Maya. It's over this time. It's a good response. There is that signal pointing directly to the floor. That one goes long from uh, Ross Wilson. Stacey to serve. And into the netting. And that's 7 3 to GB. Tip over by Wilson. Stacey trying to finish the job off and does so as the return was long. Oh, nice uh, work from Ross Wilson. Almost uh, hardly any arm movement, almost just a flick of the wrist to get it over. Yeah, they have a range of ways of actually getting the ball across with power and spin and precision. And I don't know whether that went on the table or not. It was that quick. <laughs> it did. <laughs> well, there we go. No messing about for GB. It's an 11-3 win in the opening game. And they have started off this men's doubles 
Class 18 round of 16 match in the perfect fashion. They have, and both these players have got a range of shots that are very good in terms of power, but they've also got good touch and good serves as well, so that's going to stand them in good stead. Um, the Germans had a slow start, but we saw in the previous match that the, the uh, Poles had a, um, a slow start against the GB pair, and they came back to win the next three games, so, you know, the... Um, GB pair won't be complacent, they'll try and carry on and kept, carry on putting the pressure on the German pairing. So moving on to uh, game number two. It's a bargain to serve, I do believe. To Wagner to serve to Stacey. Wagner finished bottom of the group in the Class 10 singles. And it's uh, an interesting serving start. <laughs> yeah, it, that's point away. He threw the ball up, but he threw it backwards and upwards. Yeah. Yeah, they're disputing the fact that he actually put the ball in play. They, he should lose the point. He can't have that point. He put the. It's just not. He threw the ball up. Wow. Now frustration for uh, GB. Oh yeah, they've given them the point. So they That's have fine. given them the point. Yeah, yeah, they should have done. That was good. And that's that strong backhand from Ross Wilson there. And despite their uh, frustrations, they did get the point, and they now lead by uh, three points to, to zero in game two. And now lead by four as well. So they're really motoring. Maya. On that, that occasion is long. And Stacey. There's Maya with the serve. Good flick from Ross Wilson there. First six points of game number two. It's Great Britain who lead 4 2. And Nick Myatt well lost it to Will Bailey in the quarterfinals in class seven. It's against uh, two of Will Bailey's uh, GB teammates. German pairing just uh, starting to get themselves back into this one. Oh, ruthless from Wagner making no mistake. Very, very good finish from Wagner there. Yeah, it's very spinny from Joshua Stacey there. Um, Maya couldn't handle the spin then. Serve for GB and claims another point. Yeah, great fast serve. Maya wasn't expecting that at all. And make it two and two, Stacey. Oh, brilliant. This time from Ross Wilson. Made Wagner really work for it. And Ross Wilson pushes GB into an 8 4 lead.
Two and two for uh, the Germans. Yeah, it's unusual for Wilson to miss two serves like that, but it can happen in table tennis. Good work from uh, Joshua Stacey this time. Yeah, moved round to the forehand side and played his um, forehand winner. And GB moving into double digits, so one away from claiming the second game. Oh, his eyes lit up there. Ross Wilson couldn't capitalise on that one. Space to go into. Go with the serve. Oh, brilliant return from Wagner. That was a fantastic return from Wagner. There was lots of spin on the ball from Wilson and he sent it back with interest. Bring it back to 10-8. Yeah, certainly making GB work for this uh, second game. Can Stacey finish the job off in game two? Oh, and Ross Wilson makes no mistake. Wagner couldn't return on that occasion. And GV now lead by two games to nil. Yeah, just to clarify for our viewers that when um, the German threw the ball up, the ball is actually in play. So the fact that he caught it or it, it shouldn't make a difference. You can't have another serve. It's not like tennis where they can throw it up multiple times and if you're not right, then you can, you can take it again. In table tennis, once the ball goes up, it's in play, so it was the right decision. I actually thought they were starting it again, and thinking, well, you can't do that, but uh, just that's to clarify it for the viewers. And um, it's been another good performance from the Brits as they uh, take a 2 0 lead. But the Germans came back into that, and um, they'll, be, they'll be encouraged because there were some good rallies in there that the Germans actually won. So GB in a commanding position in this match. Can they go one better? And uh, Paul Bailey and Ashley Facey, they lost out to the Polish Stewart. We've got Mishtal and Maxim Trudicki in our previous match in the men's doubles, uh, class 18. Of course, this is a round of 16 match, so a place for the quarterfinals up for grabs. No second chances. And it'll be Joshua Stacey to serve. And first point goes the way of GB. You, know, you might just see that little point to the uh, floor. We're talking today about uh, the different types of serves, indicating to your partner how you're going to serve it. And it's 1 1. Wagner. Interestingly, on that case, Wagner didn't release the ball as high up into the air. Is that just different? Yeah, the, different the, side of the table, or is it just different styles of how you want to how you serve? How you serve. So the higher you throw the ball up, the more speed and spin you can get because the ball's coming down quicker. Sorry, from a well, it's coming down at faster from a faster height. That's all. So the, there are a range of people. You know, some players. So you'll see over the championships will serve what we call high toss serves. Um, some of the GB players have got some really good high toss serves. They don't use them very often. Normally it's to try and catch somebody out. Um, you know, if things are tight, if it's game, you just, you know, it sort of upsets the other players. They see the ball going up high. They concentrate more on the ball going up high than naturally the ball itself. But, uh, yeah, so they can, you know, the range of spin and speed can be determined by the, the ball toss. Oh, good work from GB. And they are in the lead now, 4-3. Return from Wilson. Nia now to serve for Germany. And uh, they'll probably take a time out now. And got that serve all wrong and expertly called there, uh, Farrell. It is a, a timeout. No yeah. surprises really from uh, the, uh, the Germans that time that's been called. Not really. It's, um, I mean, if they'd have lost that point anyway, I think they would have called the timeout. But the fact that he actually served 
into the table and didn't even get a, you know, give uh, the GB chance to actually make a response. And they have to win this game, uh, the Germans, if they want to stay in it. Absolutely, and as GB lead by two games to nil. And this is a 16 match. Plenty more to come. After this, four more games remaining. And on table six at the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships. Work to be done, though, here for GB. And they get through to the quarterfinals. Stacey to serve. Oh, really good uh, spin there from Wagner, but uh, good response from GB. Yeah, great backhand winner from Josh Stacey there. It's from Germany. Two and two for Wagner and Germany. That one is long by Meyer and GB regain that two point advantage. Wilson and Stacey, they uh, received a bye in their uh, round of 32 match. So they didn't have to play in the round of 32. I don't know what happened there. That was a great get from Joshua Stacey there. Just dived underneath Ross Wilson to, to get the ball. Oh, and that one is long as it tips off the netting. Stacey really had to bend down to get that ball back over. And uh, they are at match point here. Oh, and there we go. Ruthless performance from Wilson and Stacey. They take care of business and I move through to the quarterfinals by three games to nil. And Wilson and Stacey proving too much for the German pair. Yeah, far too much. Um, very competent, both playing well, both very made very few errors and, and they deserve to win. Um, but there'll be stiffer tests to come in the quarterfinal. I don't know who their quarterfinal opponents will be, but as, as they get deeper into the tournament, they'll, they'll need to sort of maintain this standard and probably increase it. Well, GB safely through to the quarterfinals then. Stacey and Wilson will be in action later on today in the quarterfinals. And attention now will turn to the men's doubles class 14. This is a quarterfinal and it's between Sweden and GB, and that will get underway at 
Well, good afternoon and welcome back to live coverage of the ITTF 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships here in Sheffield at the English Institute for Sport, the home of British Para Table Tennis. We now turn our attention to the men's doubles class 14. This is a quarter final, a bronze medal here are at stake for both of these teams. It's Sweden taking on Great Britain. For Sweden, we have Jonas Hansen and Sam Gustafsson. As for GB, we have Martin Perry and Aaron McCribbin. So my name is Bradley Hope, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Farrell Anthony, former cerebral palsy world champion and three-time GB winner for this one. And we are underway in game number one. What do you expect from this uh, matchup then, Farrell? I think it could be quite an intriguing matchup. Um, McKibben and Terry have been playing together. A few, they've played together a few times now, um, but they're always intriguing matches between Sweden and Great Britain anyway. Um, but the Swedes have had the best start so far. Flying starts for Sweden. Hansen and Gustafsson. The, uh, the two Swedes on the table. Hansen lost in the quarterfinals to Kevin Dorbecke in the quarterfinals in his uh, class singles. As for Gustafsson, lost to Björn Schnarke in the round of 16. So both of those uh, players will be aiming to try and win this quarter-final, claim a bronze medal. Yeah, the referee just pointing out a uh, service technicality with the Swedes. Mistake so far. The first break is 6 0. Hansen and Gustafsson have uh, come out of the traps flying here. And work to do for McKibben and Perry. And the, uh, Perry to serve. And that's a good start after the, uh, the break for uh, GB. Yeah, a good serve and a good flick from Aaron McKibben there. Perry. And see the netting from McKibben. And already Sweden lead by eight points to one in this first game. to serve for uh, GB and that's uh, a point back for Great Britain a point needed and that one is long this time from Perry Work again from Perry, just uh, stalling this uh, Sweden charge to victory in game one. Still lots of work to do for GB. Sweden one away, and that is the frustration 
from Perry as they concede the first game in no time and Sweden take a 1-0 advantage yeah it should be expected for them to win that easily in this game but um, the Brits will go back and uh, reassess everything they'll be talking to their coach uh, just to make sure that things are right and he'll be giving them some sort of tactics as, as to how they get back into this game whereas the Swedes maybe they probably weren't expecting it to be that easy but their coach will be telling them not to get complacent and just to carry on the good work we've certainly seen good starts go to waste in previous matches so Sweden want to try and uh, keep this momentum going well, Aaron McKibben reached the quarter-finals in the Class 8 singles. Master Janitski in the quarter-finals. As for uh, Martin Perry, he reached the semi-finals. The loss to the uh, Danish player Peter Rosenmeier. So both of these players uh, going uh, deep into their respective classes in the singles. And they'll be aiming to uh, secure their place into the semi-finals. However, work to do. Good start from Hansen and Gustafsson. Here's Perry. Oh, good response, McKibben, and that gets a good roar from the crowd here in Sheffield. And they'll need a few more of those. Yeah, he almost sort of fell over to the other side. Uh, the touch was the uh, frosty of that shot. Well, this is the response that GB would have wanted. Certainly the coach would have asked for at the end of game one. Staffson to serve for Sweden. Oh, brilliant work from Perry. Can you keep it alive? They do. Well, that was an outstanding shot from uh, Perry. And, yeah, uh, the lead 3 -nil. brilliant, brilliant from Perry there. Oh, great response. After losing heavily in the first game. Perry tried to whip that over the nets. And they concede their first point to GB in game two. It's a better start from the UB pairing. Oh, well, it was a brilliant rally that ended in favour of Sweden. They're both teams just producing some fantastic table tennis. Yeah, away from the table was very good. McKibben to serve here for GB. Oh, and uh, Perry put everything behind that but uh, hits the net and uh, from a position of being 3-0 up they find themselves at 3-3 but that is the game of para table tennis yeah it's just um, it's how the ebbs and flows of a game are very unpredictable sometimes and uh, these two pairings are really well matched so um, it could potentially go to sort of five games So it is GB who retake the lead. And some of that serve. And uh, that's another point in favour of GB. So after just being pegged back, they find themselves in a 5 3 lead of GB. Perry. Watching that ball like a hawk as it bounces on the table. Now he serves. Oh, great work from McKibben. That yeah, to really stretch and get across there to actually play that ball. Really quickly. That one is long on that occasion from Perry. So 
Needs a point pull back for Sweden. Staffson will serve for Sweden now. Oh, outstanding from Perry. What a brilliant reply. Yeah, opened up by Aaron McCrimmon, but the, the finish by Perry was brilliant. Staffson now, his second serve. Yeah, lots of heavy tops in there from Martin Perry. And the great British player back in this game. They're dominating this second game. So 8-4 in the second game. 1-0 overall. And just to remind the viewers, that for those who are new to it, that every six points the, the players are allowed to uh, take a towel break. That one into the netting, so GB on the charge now in game number two, and the two points away. And getting this game back to all square, Perry, oh great work, and that one is long from Gustafsson, into double digits, one away GB, to the delight of the home crowd here in Sheffield. Great block there from the Swedes. Miles away from the back of Perry. Right in the opposite corner. Very, very good. What a brilliant return from Sweden, but they couldn't finish it off on the second go. And GB have got this game. It's all square, 1-1. One, one. And it's a brilliant reply from Great Britain. Yes, and... Uh, I thought it may be a tight game, and it's proving to be that as well. But um, the Brits played a lot better that game, put a lot more pressure on the Swedes, who made a, f a few unforced errors. But, you know, still a long way to go in this game. And um, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out over the next sort of five, six minutes. So, a reminder, this is a quarter final, so. Uh Semi-final place at stake. Bond medals as well up for grabs. So the Matt Kenny, the coach, is giving the final instructions. And there you have it. Start of the third game. And off we go, and it's a good start. Set. It's a great serve from the Swede there, just put a lot of backspin on the board. Aaron McKibben rest merit. But that's a great response from GB. Martin Perry spinning it up heavy and the Swedes missing the table. Gibbon with the serve into the netting and uh, I'll be delighted with that one, GB. 2-1. I'm sure many of you will be interested in uh, how uh, all our GB teams are doing. Try our best to keep you up to date with all the scores across the other tables. Lucy Pickard and Grace Williams won their first game against France in the women's doubles. Brilliant from Aaron McKinnon there. 
A good re-loop from uh, the original loop from the Swedish pair. Just a quick break in play. If you have been at the venue this week, you'll uh, know how, uh, how warm it is here at the English Institute of Sport. So uh, plenty of uh, wiping the, uh, the sweat away. 3-3 three, three in game number three. Perry in the cribbin. Perry again keeps it alive, but it's a great return from Hansen. It's no mistake, and they lead 4 3. Just let serve there. Just couldn't return it. McKibben frustrated with himself. And Sweden regained the advantage. Brilliant GD from hit. Martin Perry then stepped across to get the forehand top spin in. Um, it was too strong for Gustafsson. Oh, brilliant response from uh, Hansen this time around. No reply from GB. And at the moment, it's uh, you score, we score. Can't really separate these two teams in game number three. Here's McKibben with the serve. Oh, and that one's wide. And Sweden, for the first time really in this game, have just got themselves a bit of a cushion. Yeah, and Bukim just showing a bit of frustration that he actually missed that shot then. I mean, he was going for the line and he just missed it. Staffson now with the serve, quick reply from Perry and from McKibben, Perry again, McKibben goes for it and that one's long and the anguish on the face of Perry sums it up. Yeah, Martin wears his heart on his sleeve, he's a very emotional player. That one also long this time from Perry and Sweden are two points away from claiming the third game. How decisive could this set uh, these few moments be in the context of the match? Perry serving to keep GB in the game. Oh, excellent brilliant response from, from McKibben. Absolutely brilliant. Took the ball so early, didn't give the Swedes any chance of getting that ball back at all. A few more of those will do for Great Britain. Oh, but McKibben this time hits the netting and that is game three secured for Sweden. They lead 2-1. How crucial would that be going into the fourth game? Well, in terms of momentum, the Swedes have got the momentum now. Um, I think the Great Britain pairing will still be comfortable they can get back in this game. 
but they'll have to have a good start to do it. I think um, the Swedes are playing well. The Great Britain have made a few unforced errors, which they'll want to cut out. But I think um, if they can do that, you know, they'll get to the fifth game. Yeah, it's been a uh, tight affair, really separating the two sides compared to previous games we've seen during the afternoon. Work to do though here for Perry and McKibben. Semi-final and bronze medal at stake. So we're nearly ready to get underway. Just a reminder, the winner of this one will play one of France or Spain in the uh, semi-finals. That will be uh, coming up tomorrow. But for now... Um, another good point from GB there. serve for Sweden delicate play from the two teams and uh, it's uh, GB who extend their lead that one hitting the net yeah great touch play from both teams just showing you the value of out being able to touch balls quite, quite delicately over the net that yeah it's long it seems like Martin Perry started to find his range now with the top spins and uh, Gustafsson just couldn't handle the spin then. Give him to serve. Oh, and and again, is... just brilliant disguise from Aaron Kibben. Came under the ball to create a backspin and it fooled Hansen in and he put a ball into the net. Brilliant work from McKibben and they are racing through game number four. They lead by six points to one. Yeah, fantastic from the Great Britain player. serve and it's another one for uh, Great Britain and uh, the frustration on Gustafsson's face really uh, tells the story in this game and again it's great work from uh, McKibben and from Perry No answer from Sweden so far in game number four. This one is long, so it just gives them a little bit of a lifeline here, Sweden. Plenty of work left though, to do in this one. If they're going to salvage anything from game four. Again, Martin Perry with that heavy 
looping topspin that Hans Gustafsson is really struggling to get. So break in play in game number four. Swedes aren't done yet. They're still playing some good table tennis. Some work to do though, still for Sweden. Oh, oh that was brilliant from Hansen. That was amazing from Hansen. Yeah, blocked it right down the line on the money. No chance for the GB pairing. Slowly but surely, just working the way into this game. GB still with the advantage. Yeah. That one is long and puts GB one point away from taking us to the fifth game. It's just the break they needed. And a lot of talk about momentum in these games today. That could be a momentum changer, certainly in this fourth game. And Perry finished the job off for GB. Oh, Brilliant that is from absolutely the GB world class from McKibben. Brilliant from Perry. And of course, there, McKibben right at the end. And that takes us to game number five. Outstanding. Yeah, outstanding rally to finish that game. Um, both pairings have played well. And it, you know, a fifth game is probably warranted. Uh, I, I don't, I don't really know who's going to come out on top. It's just, I think the GB pairing have probably got the momentum, especially after a shot, you know, the shot to win it. Um, but they have to be on their guard because I think the Swedes will be confident as well that they can take the game, and they're playing well enough as well. I know Hansen struggled with. Uh, the Perry topspin, but it's now the reverses of well, the roles are reversed now. So Hansen will be playing into Perry, and so it'll be interesting to see what sort of problems he causes Perry as well. Well, we've got plenty of support, of course, home support here in Sheffield for GB, but these are the type of games you absolutely love when you're unsure of which way it's going to turn next. It's 2-2 going into the fifth game. Bronze medal and semi-final at stake here in the men's doubles, class 14. And if it wasn't warm enough here at the uh, English Institute for Sport, temperature, intensity is just, uh, and the tension just being turned up a notch. Oh, brilliant, brilliant from Perry. From Perry. Absolutely fantastic. Got the opening and put the ball away with so much positivity. Brilliant. Yeah, the reaction sort of said it all, didn't it? As soon as he hit that, he is pumped. And oh. again, wow. Perry on fire. He certainly is. He is on a roll here. Single-handedly. So just discussing what kind of serves he's going to do, Kibber Kibben. Great touch from Hansen to get that ball, that heavy spin back from Perry. Kibben to serve. That one's long from McKibben. Yeah. 
Oh. Brilliant from Perry. Just shows you the difference in... He had played two explosive forehands, then a nice touch into the backhand side so the Swedes couldn't get in. Brilliant. Brilliant table tennis. Yeah, really showing his array of shots. Here's Perry. And they lead by three points to two. And this game is certainly not done yet. Oh, and that one nearly, nearly just clipping the edge of the table, but it is a point that goes to Sweden. It's 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> we just cannot separate these two teams. No, it's just a compelling game of table tennis. And I could see what Alan McKibben was trying to do then. Instead of going cross court, it was going back down where the ball had come. He just missed it. And obviously, had it gone on, it would have been a winner. 2-2 two -two in games. 3-3 three -three in game number five. Which way is this pulsating, thralling game going to take us next? Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Play with the serve. Oh, and that one is long. And the frustration to show in the face of McKibben. He's got to keep his, uh, keep his cool. Still well in this. Sweden, of course, battling hard. Perry with the serve. Brilliant from Aaron. So he missed the ball and then he just, just composed himself to make another winner. Oh, and just couldn't get there and uh, Perry just takes a tumble into the uh, advertising boardings. Hope he's okay. Showing that they are giving absolutely everything to the cause. Perry seems to be uh, okay to continue. And it is Sweden who lead by five points to four. And it's so hard to predict where this game will twist next. We will blink first. Oh, big point for GB. Yeah. They bring it back to five apiece. Just to remind the viewers that it's gone to game five and it's actually the match was swapped over. First person to first team to five has to go to do the side of the table. Perry serving again. McKibben. Oh, Brilliant power well. there from Aaron McKibben. It was on one leg there as he's played that ball as well and still managed to balance and play a very strong forehand topspin and the Swedes have called a timeout. A chance uh, almost for both sides, it was almost Sweden just doing it for both teams just to give them a chance to uh, regroup, sort out the tactics, give some words of advice. Perry and McKibben lead 6-5 in game at number five in what has been a fantastic match. One Arglu the game of the day we've seen on table six. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Some brilliant shots. Um, the array of shots, the type of shots, the spin, the speed, the guile, everything. There's been everything in this game. And um, you know, the Brits are out on top at the moment. The Swedes wanted to sort of just quell that momentum. So what they've done is just called the timeout, which is they're allowed to. It's um, They're allowed a minute. Um, but the Brits, are, they don't want to, you know, they've, come, they've gone back to the table straight away. They're not bothered about how much to, They just want to get back on. They believe that they've got the momentum to win this game now. That's really good. Perry to serve. Brilliant from Perry. I think he actually saw Gustafsson move and change the serve at the last minute to put topspin on it. Because I think 
Gustafsson wanted to play it back to where Perry was, but there was that much spin on the ball that it went off the table and went away. Brilliant from the great British player. And they lead 7-5 in this 15 crucial match. Gustafsson now to serve. And that one is long on this occasion. So Sweden just, certainly not out of this one. No, just um, McKibben just stretching for that ball there. Brilliant from McKibben. Well, it restores their two-point advantage, Great Britain. They are closing in. Work still, however, to do. McKibben to serve. These moments in this quarter-final. Oh, and that one is long, and uh, McKibben just reenacting the shot he really wanted to try and play. Yeah, exactly. But it was a great shot from Gustafsson there. Yeah, putting the pressure right on uh, McKibben. Here's McKibben to serve. Oh, brilliant return. Brilliant again on. from McKibben, and he puts his fist up in the air in delight there. Brilliant reactions. And it had to be. It was so crucial, his uh, response. It was lightning quick reactions from McKibben. They are two away, GB. What a battle it's been between these two countries, these four players around the table. Oh, and then once oh. again, McKibben has all the answers. They are one away now, GB, from yep. securing the semi final place. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, winner from Martin Perry there they both played well in this fifth set <laughs> and Aaron McKinnon just missing the table there went for the right shot it was the right shot it just um, just wasn't executed that's all so players just taking Quick break, pausing. Just a quick recharge. GB, one away from the semi finals. Perry to serve. Oh, and he just missed the ball there. Aaron McKibben, very, very tight. And the GB team have called the timeout. And they certainly have as the two teams go to their respective areas. So they'll be discussing what sort of serve they're going to do, what sort of, you know, what kind of opening they want to try and create. Um, I think is when they decided they just have to execute it and not change the mind so you know whatever serve they're going to do just do that serve don't change it midway don't try and change anything because that's when you can make faults and stuff so they'll just what his coach will, what the coach will be asking mass kenny he'll be saying whatever you do just make make sure you make that decision don't change it whatever you decide to do make sure you go ahead with it and um and the Swedes will be trying to work out what kind of return they're going to play. So it's quite intriguing. It's, um, you know, the Brits have the advantage at the moment. And they have the serve as well. So they're going to be able to control what sort of spin is put on the ball. Um, Perry is in charge of this right now. So here we go around the venue glued to table six and you are enjoying this as much as we are tension is high it is palpable here at the England English Institute of Sport here is Perry to serve McKibben and and that's it. It. brilliant from GB they are through to the semi-finals of the men's doubles class 14 
in what was a fantastic match between GB and Sweden. They win 11-9 in game five. What a fantastic performance from Perry and McKibben. And they are through to the semi-finals. Yeah, and it, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was a great response. Um, the, the serve was good. The spit just put a bit of pressure on how the Swedes were turning. They were turning it into the net. It was a great, great finish to the game. And you can see how happy Perry and McKibben were. I mean, they, you know, beaming smiles, acknowledging the crowd support as well, which has been fantastic for the Great Britain team as a whole all week. Um, you know, they've had some great responses and a great response. And so now they need to regroup for their semi-final. Um, you know, they'll go away and work on a few things and then come back tomorrow, I do believe, for the semi-final match. Brilliant. Well, outstanding from Perry and McKibben for Great Britain in the men's doubles class 14. They are through to the semi-finals. So everyone, just uh, catch your breath. Just take a couple of minutes as we'll be back very shortly for the mixed doubles class 14. It's another quarter-final. It's Ukraine against GB, and that will be coming up next.
Well, a warm welcome back to live coverage here at the English Institute for Sport in Sheffield. It's the ITTF 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships. We're now into our next match. It's in the mixed doubles, class 14. It's a quarter final between Ukraine and England. GB, I should say. So for Ukraine, we have Ariane Batashenko and Viktor Duduk. And for GB, we have Billy Shilton and Fliss Tickard. My name is Bradley Hope and I'm joined by Farrell Anthony for this one. As the two teams just uh, go through their uh, warm-ups, he said to me just before we came on air, Farrell, that this could be a very fascinating match. It will be because um, the, both teams have got a left-handed, right-handed combination, um, but both teams are very competent at playing the game and, and putting the ball on the table. So, um, you know, we could have a lot of long rallies. Um, Shilton and Diddick will be looking to get in with their strong shots. They're very, they've got very powerful top spin, both backhand and forehand. And here we go, Kovchenko to serve first. And it's the first point on the board for Ukraine. Yeah, a great serve there from Tovchenko and um, popped up for Dudek to play the ball. Although, I mean, but Shilton nearly got that ball back. Strong start set for Ukraine. It's mixed doubles class 14. So the Ukrainian pairing, they uh, received a bye in the round of 16. As for Shilton and Picard, they of course played earlier in the day here on table six, beating the Romanian pairing of Nikolai and Cheruban. Oh, ruthless stuff from Ukraine, no messing about. Dina puts uh, Ukraine 3-0 up, and even in these early stages, you feel that the Ukrainians, they mean business here. Uh, yeah, they've got off to a fine start and um, putting the GB players under pressure straight away. Nice touch there from Shilton. Tushenko with that uh, shot there. Um, but it's GB who uh, see the points. 5-1. Six, the first six points down in game number one. And uh, GB just needing to <laughs> reset here already in game one. Chance to serve here in Shilton. GB, they overcame Romania early on in the day by three games to two, but it was a, a game that saw uh, Billy Shilton just get a tad frustrated. We actually just uh, saw him after the game, just uh, to quickly speak about it, just uh, talked a little bit about his frustrations in the match, and from his perspective, we'll just have to try and park that to one side for this, uh, this quarter-final. Yeah. Yeah, the Ukrainian pair have come out of the blocks really quickly, showing their intent. Great response there from Shilton. Litovchenko for Ukraine, gold medal winner in the Class 6 women's singles. Already a fantastic week for Litovchenko. And here is uh, Duduk, who himself secured the gold in the men's Class 8. So two gold medals 
for this Ukrainian pairing and they're off to a brilliant start in this mixed doubles. They lead 1-0. Yeah, they didn't give the Great Britain pair any time to settle. As you say, they're both um, respected gold medal winners in their classes. Um, Fliss Picard took up a bronze in her class and Shilton got to the quarter-final. So, the, you know, the, the standard is very good. Um, I think, you know, this could be one of those games that goes the full distance. They just, Great Britain just got off to a bad start, really. It's very difficult when you're going three or four points down in a game up to 11 to actually recover sometimes, especially against the quality of the pairing they're playing in the Ukrainians, very strong players. joined us for our previous match here on table six it was a, a real humdinger of a match that GB won by three games to two are we going to see another repeat of uh, that one in this game in this mixed doubles class 14 and have to start well GB in game two and they will be serving an outstanding yeah. reply that was incredible from Duduk that was a brilliant shot from Shilton but Duduk put the ball back with such precision oh, this Picard just missing the table there Ruthless from Diduk, making no mistake. It's uh, light work at the moment for this Ukrainian pair. And that's a point on the board. Picard and at the moment it's uh, one way traffic Ukraine leading by five points uh, to zero and uh, GB oh, we need to uh, turn this game around quickly oh, it's going to be over in the blink of an eye they yeah, seem to be struggling with the returns from the Ukraine you know, obviously they've had a strong start and they want to just continue with that Still got the support from the crowd here in Sheffield. They'll be right behind Picard and Shilton. Maybe this is a huge test for the pair. And that's another point uh, on the board for GB. Yeah, that was a great shot from Billy Shilton, just giving putting pressure on the Ukrainians, which they've got to try and do a bit more of. long this time by Litoshenko so uh, they're just starting to add some points to the board now so yeah. where to go though and that is nine up for uh, Ukraine two away from securing game two Very clever touch there from Duduk. Off the side, out of reach of Picard. That's a gold medal class from Diduk and also from Litovchenko. And they have taken the second game by 11 points to three. They are not hanging around long. They are two games up They're against Picard and Shilton. And at this rate, they will be through to uh, the semi-finals in no time. 
Yes, they've been very consistent in the first two games. They've very, made very few errors. And the great Britain player didn't put that much pressure on them either, making a few unforced errors. But that can turn around. It's, it's the best of five games. And their coach will be just giving them words of encouragement to say, you know, you can do this. They may have to take a few more risks, though, to win the points now. Because it's, if, they, if they lose this game, they're out of the competition. So you might see them make a few more um, high-risk shots in this particular game, just to try and put some pressure on the Ukrainians again. So the winner of this one will play either Poland or uh, Sweden. semi-finals this rate will be Ukraine by two games to nil so work to do here for GB Leb Chilton just going back to put, try and put some pressure on that ball So 2-2 two -two in game number three. So GB giving it Ukraine a bit of a test hit. In fact, that has been reversed. It is Ukraine who now lead by three points to one. Dudek now with the serve on well, that one is long. Would you have to put this down to a potential learning experience here for Picard and Shilton playing against two uh, quality opponents who have had a good week here in Sheffield? Yeah, but they, I mean, it, they'll be disappointed in their performance right now, but, you know, they can still turn this around. It's not impossible. The great serve there from Bill Shilton. They'll still believe they can turn it around, and that, that whilst they can still believe and... You know, they've just got to keep going and just keep trying to, to win point by point. So Ukraine leading by six points to two in game number three. With Toshenko for Ukraine. Duduk tries to keep it alive. Can't be on this occasion. Shenko with the serve, good response. And it's a valuable point for GB. That's uh, the type of table tennis that is required. It is 6-4. Oh, and uh, that's uh, mightily unlucky from Chris Pickard it alive so well. Pick up now to serve once again. Oh, great return from Billy Brilliant Shilton. From Shilton. So what Picard will be trying to do here is trying to keep the ball as tight as possible so that little Trevor can't get in with her strong forehand. Oh, it's actually to Shilton, and that the digs that it, I didn't realise he was serving to Shilton, but that's what Shilton will try and do try and keep it as tight as possible. This uh, game has certainly been a lot closer, a lot tighter. Oh, but it's uh, brilliant uh, work from D Duck, making no mistake, it's 8 6. But the Great British are still in this game. That's what they've got to believe. They can still win it. It's Shilton to serve. But the quality of Dudek, he, you know, he's hardly missed anything when it come, when the ball's been high today. 
from Diduk. Tosenko there about to effort and that one is wild off the bat of Billy Shilton. And Ukraine are one point away from confirming their place in the semi-finals. And uh, it's a gold apiece for Diduk and Litoshenko in their singles championships this week. Can they add more medals to the cabinets? And that is that for uh, Ukraine. What a ruthless clinical performance that was from Diduk and Litovchenko. They have beaten Shilton and Picard by three games to nil. And uh, that was some performance from the Ukrainian pair. Yeah, they were solid all the way through the game. They played really well. Duduk hardly missed and Litovchenko played her part as well. Um, it's very difficult because the, the pressure mounts as, 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 as the points are mounting up against an opponent, whether it be Great Britain or anybody else, you find it harder to get back in the game. Then you start, you start to have to take more risks, uh, risky shots. But because of the high risk, there's more likelihood that you're going to miss the table or, you know, misplace the serve. It's just very difficult and the Great Britain pair would be disappointed about their performance. They would have wanted to put in a better performance than that. I'm not saying they would have won, but they you know they they are they are much better than what they've performed today, but all credit to the Ukrainians because they play fantastic today. An outstanding performance uh, from Ukraine. And we now move on to our penultimate match of the day. It will be from the mixed doubles class 17. It's a quarter-final between Hungary and France. Don't go anywhere. Two fabulous matches still to come here at the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships.
Well, welcome back to live coverage of the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships here at the English Institute for Sport in Sheffield, the home of British Para Table Tennis. It's our penultimate game of the day. It's the Mixed Doubles Class 17 quarter-final between Hungary and France. Now for Hungary, our two players, Andres Sonka and Alexa Svitox. As for France, we have Lucas Didier and Lucy Portier, the two France players. So this is a mixed doubles. It's Class 17 with a place in the semi-finals up for grabs. So my name is Bradley Hope and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Farrell Anthony for this one. So no GB teams involved in this one, which is the first for a while, was on table six. It's going to be another uh, intriguing matchup with uh, the two French players very young in age, 20 and 22, against uh, the experience of uh, this Hungarian pair. Yes, it's, um, I don't know much about the both pairings, but uh, I do, well, I know a bit about Zonka because he's actually um, won a few major medals. Um, I had the uh, privilege of playing him um, a few years ago. Uh, very strong, very, very mobile, very quick, very light on his feet, very good player. Um, but the, the French have always produced very good players anyway. And uh, Svitox, I think she got a medal in her particular class. I don't know which colour now, I can't remember. But um, she's a very strong player. We, we um, had her match on this table during the singles. Sonka, plenty of bronze and silver medal medals in his career. Eight major medals in total across European, Paralympic and World Championships. Here is uh, that man, Sonka, to serve for Hungary. Such a young partnership here for France. Lucas Didier, 20 years of age. Lucas Hortier, 22. Yes, and sometimes the uh, exuberance of youth means they're, they're, they're fearless and they don't, you know, even though it's a European Championship and they once have had many um, major... I've lost it there for a bit. <laughs> Just, um, major championships, that's what I meant to say. Farrell, don't yeah. worry, it's our penultimate game of a uh, long week here at the championships. You're OK to uh, just slightly lose your train of thought for a second. I'll let you off on thank, this thank occasion. Thank you very much. The major championships, although they're, they're only very young, um, you know, they're, 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 they're in the team for a reason, and that reason is they're very good players. Yeah, so both of these, uh, so this pairing uh, played in a round of 16 match, Lucas Didier Lucy Hortier in the uh, round of 16 match where they beat uh, the Norwegian uh, duo of Jacobson and Darlin in a uh, game that went uh, all the way, finished 3-2 to France, so they've already played. As for uh, Svitox and Sonka, they didn't play in a round of 16 match they were awarded a bye coming into this quarter final so you never know that might just have uh, some bearing on the match and Didier just showing a bit of frustration there with, the, with missing that ball Didier going for it again Sestox just chips it over Sonka with the reply and uh, wins uh, that point just pushes them ahead 6-5 Just uh, all wrong from uh, Lucy Hotier and uh, wildly off the bat, and that's 7-5 uh, to Hungary. So both teams have started fairly well, We've made a few forced errors, but it looks like it's going to be a close matchup. DDA. Didier now for France, Didier goes again, good rally this Didier, slices it, 
Oh, and Sonka oh, and just gets that wrong. Yeah, Finch come out on top of that brilliant rally. Seatox now will uh, serve for uh, Hungary. Nice serve, Seatox and uh, Hortier. Just over hitting that one and 9-5 uh, now to Hungary. Seatox with an opportunity to serve. Gets it this time, Hortier. Oh, and uh, nicely finished off from Didier. No mistake there from the Frenchman. Um, Sonka will be disappointed he missed that shot then well, this is going right down to the wire it is at 9 all in game number one to serve and big point one by France they are now one away in what has been a topsy-turvy opening game in this quarter-final swung one way then the next here is uh, Sonka and France finish it off Hortier with a uh, brilliant finish and they have claimed the first game and, and you could almost see the excitement in their body language as they rush back to their coach. Yes, I think she's probably in the wrong sport. I think she's probably on to do the 100 metres. She was that fast. Um, yeah, the French have started really well. They'll be pleased. Like you say, it was a top to serve the game, but the French have come out on top. Um, and the Hungarians will be a bit disappointed that they weren't able to close out the game. But... Um, they'll come back I don't think they'll be too disappointed I think they'll come back and regroup and start the second game believing that they can actually win it both coaches just expressing uh, what they'd like their uh, players to do um, just to remind it to the um, viewers that they get um, one minute between games to speak to a coach and take on water and fluid and, and maybe a bit of um, maybe an energy bar or something to keep their energy levels up and hungry to get us back underway then game two Sweetox to serve. Touch from Hortier and uh, Didier. Oh, and Didier tried to keep the, the rally going. Nearly did as well. It did. Yeah. It nearly, that was a brilliant effort from Didier to try and get that ball back. Sweetox now. Oh, another brilliant rally and France have won that one. Well, they didn't win the first. They've won the second point. It's one apiece. And that was a... Fantastic uh, show of table tennis from both teams there. Didier, no serve again. That touch from Sonka, oh, and Hortier tried to whip it over the uh, net. And He's timed it, that's all. Didier. Applied from Seth Tuts and Sonka, and uh, point goes the way of uh, the Hungarian pair. Zonka missed, missed the serve, he won't be happy about that. Oh, another brilliant shot from Didier, really putting the pressure on Zonka. Yeah, he's, he's really moving around the court well, hitting the ball well, seeing it well. It's too, you know, some of those shots are very hard to get back on, but he's doing really well. Okay, now. Will serve for France. They've got this back to 3-3. Not for long. 
Yes, Fetox there with a very strong forehand opening up shot. Again, long serve from Portier, which was dispatched with a plum by Svitox. Svitox now to uh, serve for Hungary. Starting to build up a bit of momentum. And Didier returning the favour, very strong forehand. I think he's both, both sets of players will be looking to get in as strong as possible on a weak serve. long from Hortier. Two point margin has been restored for uh, Hungary in uh, game number two. And a uh, timeout has been called here in the middle of the second game. So a chance for uh, both teams just to uh, recoup, rest up and uh, go again for the rest of game two. Yeah, I think the French have called it because they, they, I think they they see the importance of this game, and if they can go two 0 up, it puts more pressure on the Hungarians. Um, the Hungarians will be happy because they, you know, they they're the ones in the ascendancy at the moment. Um, it's going to be quite an intriguing game. It could. It could go all the way. This is, it could be one of those games that actually goes to five games, you know, five games to win the match. And we've had a couple of games so far. We've uh, gone the distance. And we've given us so many thrills and spills. Is this going to be another one? Yes, uh, I'll mention that. It's 6-4 uh, to Hungary in game two. France lead 1-0 overall. And as the players return back to the table. And a bit of vocals there from Portier as they won that point. Yeah! One long on this occasion. Sonka and uh, Portier just stuck. Uh, uh, using the towel, using a quick break. Trying to serve. Touch from Sweet Tox. Put away by Hortier. Great serve there from Sonka. Um, just misread by Hortier slightly, and that's why it went off the table. One point away from levelling up this quarter final. Speed docks now. On this occasion, France still fighting. You can still turn this one around. Speed docks to try and finish the game off. Oh, and that one is wide at the table and Hungary claim the second game in another brilliant rally between the two teams but it's one apiece yes and uh, I think it, on the balance of the play I think the Hungarians played better in this game than the French so um, one all um, both coaches will be reasonably happy with the way things have gone so far um, but uh, we'll just have to see 
what happens in this because this third game is definitely really crucial. I think it's one of those where I think the the team that take this will definitely have an advantage going into the fourth game. So the two teams just again some words of uh, advice, encouragement from the two coaches as they head back out onto uh, towards the table. Just a reminder, one more game remaining here on table six. It's been another brilliant day here at the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships and just a huge thank you to the ITTF, the British Para Table Tennis, Table Tennis England, the Sheffield City Council. UK Sport and the National Lottery for all their support in staging this uh, brilliant event here at the uh, English Institute for Sport. Your support is uh, so crucial and so welcome, so a massive thank you. Let's uh, go back to the action. Great serve there from Hortier. She made it sort of kick off the table and it just went underneath the bat of Zonka. Oh, great rally this. Who's going to come out on top? It is going to be Hungary. Zonka finishes it off. And that was uh, an outstanding rally of table tennis. Zonka. Goes back underway, lead by uh, two points to one. Yeah, it's long by Didier and. Uh, Frustration, the Frenchman. Three-two. Here with the serve. And it's into the net from Mortier. Yeah, she just rushed a bit that shot there. She was forced into rushing it because it came to her very quickly. Vitox gold in the class nine singles at the World Para Table Tennis Championships last year. And maybe just a little bit of that added uh, experience now, just proving vital over uh, this young French pairing. Great serve there against from Svitox into Hortier. Lots of side spin and top spin which took to take the ball off the table. Brilliant shot from that. Sonka, can he keep it going? Oh, he can. And they move into an 8 2 lead. Yeah, it's fantastic combination of shots from Sonka there one down the f um, diagonal and then uh, a winner down the line response from Didier for France um, it was a bit of a loose serve from Zonka very easy for Didier to actually play a winner there
Santa Court Farm at Hungary. They're two points away from claiming the third game. Seacox. Oh, brilliant response though. That's great from Didier. Took the ball very early to make the winner. Oh, it's almost just setting up Sonka to finish that one off. And he didn't make any mistake in putting it away. Oh, well kept alive by Svitox. Oh, but isn't punished by Didier and Hungary win the third game by 11 points to six and are in pole position to book a spot into the semi-finals. Yeah, I think the, the Hungarians have gone up a notch in terms of Zonka's not missing the ball and, and Svisok's doing the same. She's, she's actually looking to win points now um, and it's made it very difficult for the young French pair. Today looks... Um, he didn't look forlorn, but it, I think he's looked dis just disappointed about the way things have gone. But their coach will be giving them words of encouragement and advice. He's still in this game. It's not, it's not um, outside the realm that they can't win the next two games. But they have to. They can't afford to make sort of silly mistakes now. They've already called the timeout as well. So, you know, if this fourth game gets away from them, they haven't. They can't. They can't break it up. They've got to carry on and, and work it out for themselves. And that's because they called the timeout so early in game two. Ready to get back underway then. Four. Need to serve, sweet box. France off to uh, an ideal start. And take the first point. Oh, just uh, couldn't uh, retrieve the ball there, Svitox, and uh, France uh, marched into a 2 0 lead. the response that uh, Sonka would have wanted. Yeah, it's very difficult when you're playing a long serve. You have to be, it has to be very fast or placed very well for somebody like Sonka not to actually get in with a strong forehand. There, there is a classic example of Fetox finishing power straight down the line. And Donka really loved that shot there, right down the line, made it hard for the French pair to actually get the ball back on the table. Good serve from Hortier there. Petox tried to get in, but the ankle was so tight. Oh, it's a great reply from Spetox. Put the pressure right back on that DDA. Number three in the class nine. Spetox showing her class. Long from uh, Andras Sonka. Yeah, I think he got tucked up really. He tried to create space and uh, it just wasn't enough for him to get the ball back on the table. Well, a 
a uh, misfortune fire from uh, Svitox. I think she'd have uh, thought she'd put that one away. But as it is, it is 5-5. Five five. Not for very long as Hungary regain that advantage. That was a very clever ball from Donker. Came round the ball and underneath the ball to create side spin and back spin, and that's why Horte put it in the net. And this time it was a very clever shot from Svitox. So just a little bit of added experience in class, just proving the difference here between these two sides but these young pairing Didier and Hortier put up a really good fight so far and they are still well in this game and still well in the match do not write them off great serve from Zonka there putting imparting lots of backspin on the ball Oh, brilliant from Zonka. That is outstanding from the uh, the Hungarian. As the uh, Didier and Hortier threw everything at Svitox and Zonka, they just came up with all the answers. And now they are at one point away from securing their place in the semi-finals. After being one game down, they have uh, proved their worth, showed their class. And only moments away, although that one is long, so let's uh, have a reprieve. They're still in this one. Oh, and there we go. It. Brilliant um, end to the game from Svitox there, the Hungarians. Unbalanced deserve to win they, they were the, they made the less least errors and were looking to put a lot of pressure on the um, young French player and they came out on top well they're still very young these two Didier and Hortier they'll uh, plenty of uh, table tennis uh, left in them left in them and this is a great learning experience for them playing some uh, quality players and they'll come back stronger I'm sure of that but it's uh, Brilliant performance from the Hungarians. They are through to the semi-finals of the mixed doubles class 17. And we will now move on to our final game of the day here on table number six. It's the men's doubles class 18 quarter-final between GB and Ukraine. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with you very soon.
Well, a very warm welcome back to the ITTF 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships here at the English Institute for Sport in Sheffield, the home of British Para Table Tennis. It's our final game on table number six on day five here at the Championships, our first day of doubles action. And it is the men's doubles class 18 quarterfinal between GB and Ukraine. For GB, we have Ross Wilson and Joshua Stacey. As for Ukraine, Viktor Duduk and Maxim Nikolenko. Well, my name is Bradley Hope, and I'm delighted to say for one final time today, I'm joined by Farrell Anthony, former cerebral palsy world champion and three-time GB winner. Well, Farrell, our final game of the day. It's another match which GB are involved in, and of course will want to try and aim to get to the semi-finals yes um, but they are going to have an almighty task in terms of trying to overturn a fantastic Ukrainian side um, they contested the men's class 8 final um, both of them Nikolenko getting the silver and Dudu getting the bronze but uh, our GB pair are very strong they'll be confident they can win and it's a great start there from, from our GB side. Um, Josh Stacey playing a fantastic shot and Ross Wilson following up. Well, Ross Wilson and Joshua Stacey dispatched uh, Neil Wagner and Hendrik Meyer by three games to nil earlier on in the day in the round of 16. And they've got off to the perfect start here against this uh, Ukraine duo. Now, if you're uh, wondering why we're just starting a little bit later than scheduled, uh, it is because uh, Nikolenko has come quite literally straight from one game, the next doubles Class 17 quarterfinal, which happened just on the table next to him on Table 7, straight into this uh, quarterfinal. So... His energy levels uh, are going to be tested to the max here. Well, it's been a bright start from GB so far in game one. Uh, Ukraine have just uh, secured their first point. And that's two and two for Ukraine. Yeah, just to remind the viewers that they're allowed to towel down after every six points. And so, the score at 4-2, they've both taken the towel. It is quite warm in the arena today, so um, those towel breaks will be quite important in trying to keep the bats and the table dry from the moisture. Well, uh, Ukraine had to overcome Bulgaria and Hungary to get to the uh, quarter-finals. Nikolenko, fourth match of the day. And some effort. Oh. The uh, six-time gold medal winner. Across uh, European, World and Paralympic Games, I'm sure we'll be up for the test. And uh, Ukraine have fought their way back into this one, but uh, big point for GB. The support could be crucial for uh, Wilson and Stacey here as they lead 6-4 in game one. That's a fantastic down-the-line punch from Ross Wilson there to extend the Great Britain lead. Stacey to serve. Oh, brilliant work from Stacey and from Wilson. And they've put themselves in a good position here in game one. Yeah, fantastic opening um, attack from Ross Wilson and then just dispatched by Ross, uh, Josh Stacey.
And Ross Wilson there, he moved round from, it looked like he was going to play a forehand, moved round quickly to his backhand to play a winner. Well, this combination of uh, Wilson and Stacey secured the silver at the World Para Table Tennis Championships in the doubles, Class 18. Well, that's absolutely brilliant from Wilson and Stacey. And they have taken the first game. What a start. And the start they would have dreamt of against this uh, tough Ukrainian opponent. Yeah, it was it, the perfect start for them, really. Um, it, it's one of those where they seem to get into their groove straight away and then they just got more confident. And it's not, any, it's not really that the Ukrainians did anything wrong. It's just that the GB pair were playing so many winners. And um, the Ukrainians won't, they won't be too upset about that because they know that you know, it's the second game, they've got a second game. And conversely, the Great Britain pair won't be complacent either because, you know, we've, as we've seen all day, sometimes after the first game, there is a, you know, that the people can turn, you know, the team can turn it around and they'll be aware of this uh, dangerous Ukrainian side. Um, you know, if, if they get um, a momentum as well, they could possibly, you know, take two or, th you know, two or three uh, quick points in the first in the second game well, Wilson and Stacey both lost their respective quarter-finals in their class singles aiming to go one better here in the men's doubles and we're set to get back underway brilliant from Stacey there right in the corner Left Nikolenko standing. A great start from the Grey Bim pair. 23-year-old Stacey showing his class so far, as is Wilson. Oh, and that's another winner for GB. They are on fire this evening. And at the moment, they are on course to send this GB crowd home happy. Work still to do, though. Great serve from Bullock there. Just tying up Stacey in the backhand side. And he was almost bamboozled, really, by that one. Great response from Wilson there, though. All four players are very capable of explosive finishes, and um, at the moment, the GB pair are uh, on top. A great serve from Joshua Stacey there. Three apiece then between GB and Ukraine in game number two. Oh, outstanding, Stacey. Straight down the middle. Um, between the two Ukrainians, very quick. He's probably one of the quickest players in the Class 9 class, uh, Josh Stacey. He moves very quickly. So GB4, Ukraine 4. Serve. And Ukraine fought back in this game and they turned this one around. We saw Diduk's uh, class earlier on in the day on table six. And he produced one uh, final effort on day five. Yeah. And a 
medal winner in the Class 8 singles, of course, against his partner, Mikolenko. Oh, brilliant, brilliant from Stacey. And that is the response that Stacey and GB would have dreamt of. Brilliant from Stacey. Oh, no oh. mistake from Wilson. It's 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, that was fantastic. It was He took the ball so early there, Ross Wilson. Nobody had a chance of getting that ball at all. He shaped to go one way and then just went down the line very quickly, got into position. Fantastic play from the GB pair. Stacy to serve. Oh, and uh, at the moment, GB are coming up with all the answers in these uh, previous couple of points. Yeah, and they're having to play well to get through this Ukrainian side. And testament to the Ukrainians have called the time out. They know how crucial this game is. So Wilson and Stacey for at GB. They lead by one game to nil. They leading 7-6 in game two. This at home crowd is getting very excited here at the English Institute for Sport. And the support and the atmosphere has been fantastic, in particular through the GB matches here in Sheffield and if you'd like to be a part of it tomorrow tickets are still available £12 for the entire day's play it's our final day here at the championships don't miss out you can purchase your tickets on the British Para Table Tennis website or at the venue here at the English Institute for Sport and you can find the uh, all the daily schedule as well all the matches across all the tables here on the ittf.com website if you do forward slash ittf web results you will be able to find uh, everything you need regarding the championships in the final day but back to the action here in this uh, crucial game and it's another big point for gb just creeping towards that magic 11 Kalenko, his fourth game of the day. Absolutely incredible work. And uh, Diduk and Nikolenko have dragged this back to 8 8. So at the GB pairing, just having to switch on again here. Just a service error from Wilson there. Brilliant from Stacey again, right in the corner. Just Nikolo, Nikolenko didn't even move. It was so precise into the corner of the table for a winner. Magic from Stacey. Nine all. Nothing to separate the two teams in game two. We look to serve for Ukraine. Brilliant return from Stacey there. And Just so now. he's got very good touch around the table as well. Absolutely. One point away, GB. Oh, we've kept it alive. Oh, and it just set up nicely for it, did it? Yeah, it just clipped the net on the way through, changes the trajectory of the ball. Opportunity missed there from uh, Stacey and Ukraine now in position trying to secure game two Galenko to serve oh and it's a great comeback from Ukraine they have taken 
the second game after being 8-6 down at one point. They win the second game 12-10 and uh, just some uh, thinking to do for the GB pair. It's one all. Yes, and um, the Ukrainian pair just nicked that then, but they have been playing well in the last part of that game. Um, and I don't think that the GB player would be surprised that they came back into the game. It's just because they are so good, at, you know, two quality teams. But they, they, they are playing well. Both teams have started to play really well now. So um, it's just who, who takes the upper hand in, the, in this third game. Um, the Ukrainians have taken the time out and that could prove quite crucial later on in this game anyway so you don't you know hopefully you know the third game will sort of live up to the second the end of the second game where both teams will play some really good table tennis really ready to go for game three Duck to uh, get us underway. Oh, great starts from uh, Stacey. Yeah, the justy backhand from Stacey. He's not, you know, he's, he's very rarely missed that backhand, and that's a good, very good start for the Great Britain pair. Brilliant from Ross Wilson. Changed where he was actually putting the ball there. Took Nikolenko up to win the point. for GB oh, and just uh, couldn't dispatch that one Stacey it did just top, touch the top of the netting and just uh, unsettled uh, Stacey on that occasion on his second serve Blanco responds oh great work Stacey 3-1 brilliant flick over the table from Josh Stacey very powerful finish Still bouncing around both players on the JB side. And it just couldn't be returned by Wilson. Oh, that's another crucial point. One by uh, Ross Wilson. Superb return from Wilson there. Do it, spun it up heavy. But Ross Wilson took it so early, off the bounce. Went like an exercise. Stacey. Runs into the side netting. Duduk there was very, very quick in the response, very quick, um, just showing his quality. Oh, and that one is out, and they've regained their lead. for game three. Oh, brilliant fantastic. there from, brilliant rally in total. I know the GB pair came out on fr in top, but it was fantastic play from both teams just then. It certainly was. And that's the uh, momentum boost that GB would have been craving. Can they extend that lead? 
Oh, not quite this time. And almost in disbelief is Stacey that he's missed out on that one. Yeah, because he, he, obviously he's been playing so well. But. Awesome. Oh, and that's two and two that's uh, been conceded by uh, Stacey. And we're back to 6-6 uh, six, six, and uh, the frustration was uh, clear to see. It's very hard. Um, Nikolenko played a very quick flick into the backhand side. And, um, you know, like I say, both teams are playing well. Both teams are playing some really good stuff. So it's a really tight match. That's oh. brilliant from Wilson. It was unbelievable there. It, it shaped to go the same side as where the ball came from and then saw Nikolenko moving and played it down the line. Oh, it's another point gained for GB. And that just shows you... That the, you've got the explosive power of Josh Stacey, but then the delicate touch as well, just to, to make sure that they couldn't get the ball. Uh -huh. Brilliant again. Great combination, great serve, great finish by Wilson as well. Take a three-point lead. Just signalling what kind of serve he's going to do for Wilson. He just missed it. Right, right shot. Just obviously just missed the table by a very small amount. Millimeters away. GB finished the job off. Just kept alive, brilliant work from Wilson. Stacey tries to whip it back onto the opposition side of the court, but can't do so. And uh, one point now separating the two teams. Those are moments in the match. Good up the serve. Stacey, brilliant, brilliant from Stacey. Rectified his error from the earlier point. It's brilliant from Joshua Stacey. And he puts them one point away from a 2 1 advantage. And both teams take into the towel as well. Give themselves a bit of respite. It's Wilson to serve. Just signalled what kind of serve he's going to do for Josh Stacey. And that is a fantastic finish from Josh Stacey. Well, well, well. GB are a game away from securing their place in the men's doubles. Class 18's semi-finals. Don't go anywhere. This game is hotting up and it's at the moment going the way of GB. And the crowd here are loving every second of this as the two teams just take a quick break ahead of a fourth and crucial game. And if you heard another roar, there was another GB win on, a, on another table. Um, Shackleton and Hunter Spivey have just beaten the Turkish pair. Everything's going the way of GB at the moment in these final games of the day. Day five here at the Championships. As, um, as I just alluded to um, earlier on about the, signal, the communication between the players about the serves and the kind of spin they're going to put on the ball, it's very crucial that your uh, partner knows what kind of spin to, um, to expect um, what kind of return to expect from the serve you're actually serving and that's why they do that sort of communication
Good start for GB in this uh, fourth game. Stacey, second serve. Oh, that's a fantastic return from Nikolenko there. Took it very early, took it off the side. Quality shot from there from the Ukrainian. Well, this Ukraine duo. Been fantastic so far in these championships. And they'll be desperate to take it into tomorrow at this pair. Nikolenko to serve. Oh, a bit of frustration there for uh, Ross Wilson. Oh, and he just missed the ball there, stepped across. Just misjudged the flight of the ball to give the Ukrainians a three-point lead. Brilliant there, recovered that brilliant backhand to reduce the deficit to two points. Support coming from the stands in this set. crucial fourth game. Oh, and that one is wide off the table, big points. Yeah, big point, and Nikolenko just uh, clipped the top of the net and it went away. Good to serve. Good response there from Nikolenko after missing the shot. He still went for his went for that backhand and to win the point. Let called. Let called. Obviously, Joshua Stace didn't see that. He, you know, he didn't do that deliberately. He just didn't see that there'd been a let called. Brilliant serve from Stacey there. He didn't put a lot of spin on the ball then. And it just floated off from the Nikolenko racket. And that's brilliant again from Justin. That time he put heavy backspin on the ball. And that's why it went into the bottom of the net from Nikolenko. Well, this game is on a knife edge, firmly in the balance. 5-5, five, five, game four. Who's going to blink first? Who's going to break first? Oh, it's... Brilliant there. from Josh Stacey there. Brilliant again. And that time, Josh Stacey didn't go for a big shot, just, just good placement. It just shows you the variation in spin and speed can fox your opponent as well. Seven five GB. Oh, that's a fantastic shot. That was brilliant. He kicked, that was what we call a kicker serve. And it foxed um, Dudek then. GB on the charge here in game number four. They are tantalisingly close from a place in the semi-finals. Oh, and that's brilliant from Stacey. I'm sorry, but that's probably one of the best shots he's played all match. A lot of side spin, but straight down the line. Took it early. Brilliant from and Wilson this time. They are edging so close now. They are a point away. Hold your breath. Here we go. Replacing the semi-finals. 
but the Ukrainians are still in it. Brilliant smash from Nikolenko. Although Ross Wilson got his back to the ball, he couldn't actually get it on the table. Jess Stacey just signalling to Ross Wilson what kind of serve it's going to be. And there it is. What a fantastic finish to the game for the British pair. A big fist pump from Ross Wilson as well to the British choir to thank them. The Ukrainians played a fantastic part in this game, but uh, it's the Great Britain pair that come, um, come out on top. Well, what a performance that was from Stacey and Wilson and they end the day on a high for GB and they are through to the men's doubles class 18's semi-finals with a 3-1 victory over the formidable duo of Diduk and Nikolenko. Well, what a performance, what a result for GB and what a way to end day five here at the ITTF 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships. What a day that has been, Pat. Yeah, it's been a fantastic day and a fantastic finish for GB. And what, what the GB pair did so well was they actually won the points at the end. There weren't mistakes from the Ukrainians. They actually won those points. And that, there's nothing the Ukrainians could do. There was just, you know, just pure quality from the GB pair. And I think well-deserved winners and Hopefully, you know, they'll be wanting to get through to the final um, and win the semi-final tomorrow. So it should be a good day as well tomorrow. Some great table tennis played on today by both pairings. Absolutely. What a fantastic day it has been here at the English Institute for Sport in Sheffield. And it's the final day of action tomorrow. Medals up for grabs. Who will claim them? Join us tomorrow. We get underway at 10 a.m. here at the English Institute for Sport. There is still time to get tickets as well. If you can get down here to Sheffield to the English Institute for Sport, tickets are £12 and you can join in the action and cheer on these GB athletes as they try and claim bronze, silver and gold medals. But for now, thank you very much for joining us today. Hope you've enjoyed the coverage and we'll be back with you tomorrow morning with a 10 a.m. start. Thank you very much and good night.